Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over assignment two. So let's get started. Let's make sure that I am on and I'm recording. All right, so let's go over sample solutions for assignment two. All right, so here's the first practice question. So first of all, we want to recognize that we have alphabet is A and B. So our alphabet is AB. So we want to have all strings that have an even number of A's in it. But since it's an alphabet with A and B, we also need to consider what we're going to do with B's. And since nothing has been defined about what you do with B's, it just you're just going to assume that you have to have an even number of A's, but you can have any number of B's. So the first thing when you're doing this is you kind of have to understand and make sure you understand the language. And so what are some strings that would be in the language? Well, a single B would be in the language because an even number of A's also includes zero A's. A string that would not be in the language would be AB because that's an odd number of A's. Some other strings, ABA, yes, that should be in the language because that's an even number of A's. And then again, we don't care about how many B's we have. So that's the first strategy is to come up with some strings and make sure that you understand what the language is talking about. Then the next step is to draw your DFA. So we also need to decide if the empty string is going to be in the language. And the empty string is a string that has uh, no symbols in it, but it still is called the empty string. And if the empty string is in the language, then the initial state is going to be the accepting state. So if you want to say, OK, if you have zero A's and zero B's, is that in the language? And you, yes, it is. So we would count this state as um, accepting. So another thing that um, you just got to keep in mind is that when you're labeling your states, there's no rule that says you have to use labels Q0, Q1. Those are just what's used in the book, so that's kind of the notation that I'm using. But you could label this zero to say, okay, I have no A's. And then you could say, I pick up one A, so this state is going to be one A. And then I pick up another A, which I can go back here in a cycle, and that is also going to be an even number of A's. So if I were to run strings through this for A's, you would see that 1A is not accepting. A, so 1A is not accepting because that's not an even number. But AA would be accepting because you have 1A, 2As, you come back here. 3As is going to take you back to this state, etc. So now I've handled even number of A's, and now I just need to add the B's to this. And since I can have any number of B's, I can just add cycles here to represent any number of B's. So that would be a DFA for a language in which all on alphabet AB, in which all strings have an even number of A's and any number of B's. And this was a practice question. So if you were, it was not clear to you about any number of B's, there was a sample solution in the back of the book. Okay, this is a string with even number of A's and odd number of B's. So again, we can start out. So we know we're not going to have the empty string is not going to be in this language because you have to have at least one B. Because an odd number of B's is one B. So you can have one B, three B's, five B's, and an even number of A's. So we can start by counting our A's. It's a DFA. We can count our A's in this direction. So this is, would be zero A's and zero B's. And we can start counting our A's in this direction. So this would be one A and zero B's. And we can count our B's in this direction. This would be zero A's and one B. All right, so if we... Uh, were to come back with our A's this way, that still is going to be 1A. Uh, we still have no B's there, so we can come back this way with our B's. And now we're going to add the A's and the B's. If you have 1A and 1B, it would be 1A and 1B. If you have 1B and 1A, 
So then if we go here, we have, um, and again, remember that when you're dealing with a DFA, you have to have, first of all, you have to have all transitions defined for all symbols of the alphabet. So the way that you can tell that you have that is you can see here that from this state right here, I have a transition for A and a transition for B. From this state right here, I have a transition for A and a transition for B. From this state right here, I have this one right here, I have a transition for A and a transition for B. The only one I haven't finished is this one. So we have to come back here and say, okay, if I were to come and I get here from this to here, that's going to give me B, A, that's one A. So if I would go back with another A this way, then I would go back to even number of A's and an odd number of B's. So that's what these mean right here. Each one of these, this is an even number of A's and an even number of B's, odd number of A's, even number of B's, even number of B's, odd number of A's, odd number of A's and an odd number of B's. So we'd still have to put our B back this way. So you could practice this with some strings. So keep in mind that, um, so let's make a string that has an even number of A's, A, 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 and an odd number of B's, B, B, B. So this is a string right here that has an even number of A's because it has four A's and an odd number of B's. And then you just run this string through your DFA to check. So to check, we would start here at our initial state and we would get an A, we consume the A. So we take this transition right here. We consume another A, so we take the transition back here. We consume a B, so we're gonna go here. And we have another B, so we're gonna go back here. And now you can even see that we've done even A's and even B's, and we ended up in the even A, even B section. Now we have an A, so we're gonna come back this way again. It doesn't matter, I should have crossed this off, it doesn't matter. And now we have a B, so we're gonna go here. And now we have an A, so we're gonna go here. So we have landed in even number of A's, odd number of B's, and that is what this uh, language is, an even number of A's and an odd number of B's. So this is going to be the accepting state. We could try one more string that has, that won't be accepting. We could do an odd number of A's and an even number of B's. So let's try an odd number of A's and an even number of B's. I'll get a different color. So we start out, actually let's start, let's start with a B, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna do an odd number of B's and an even number of A's, okay. So we start out here with a B, and then we go B, and then we have an A, and then we have an A, and then we have a B. And so all of you who were paying attention and getting very annoyed because this is pre-recorded, I did an odd number of Bs and an even number of As, and I was trying to do one that was gonna end up in a not accepting state. So let's try again. We will do B, A, A, B, A. So this is an even number of As and an odd, even number of B's and an odd number of A's. So let's try again. We go B, A, A, B, A. And it would end up here. This is odd number of A's, even number of B's, and that is not an accepting state. All right, so here's the next one. All strings with any number of A's and exactly three B's. So my strategy to do this would be, okay, first of all, I'm gonna determine, is the in, uh, initial state gonna be accepting? No, because you have to have three B's. So I would start out by picking up my three B's. One, two, 
and three. Oh, this has the wrong, sorry. Okay, so now I've picked up my three Bs. I have exactly three Bs in my string, so this is gonna be accepting. So to uh, so now I have to deal with my A's. Well, I can have any number of A's here. I can have any number of A's here. I can have any number of A's here. And I can have any number of A's here. And now I have, I have realized that my DFA solution right here is not a DFA. And that's good that I have recognized that so I can explain to you why it's not a DFA. This says to create a DFA and this solution is not correct. The reason this is not correct is because with a DFA you have to have every transition defined from every single state. So what does that mean? That means that although this does satisfy the requirements, I need to, I don't have any transition defined from here if I get a B. So here I have A, B, a, B, A, B, A, but if I get another B, then I need to define that and I'm going to have to go to the trap state or you can name it four or five or whatever. And then it's still not a complete DFA because I have to have every single transition defined for every single state. So therefore now it is complete and now it is a DFA. This is just an NFA because it is missing the state, the uh, transitions for every single uh, letter of the alphabet, symbol of the alphabet from every state. Okay, so this one is the number of A's mod three minus the number of B's mod, are, is less than the number of B's mod three. So again, you can do this strategy of naming them. So we could start out like this. And here we have zero A's and zero B's. And here we pick up one A. So we have one A and zero B's. And here we have another A. So we have two A's and zero B's. And we bring an A back around. So this would be three A's because three mod, if you have three A's mod three, that's zero, four, five, so this is like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 A's. And we can start the same thing with B's. We have 0 A's, 1 B. 0 A's, 2 B's. And we come back there. And then we just have to fill it all in. If I have 1 A and 1 B, then it would be a 1, 1, or 4 A's and 4 B's, et cetera, or 1 A and 4 B's. Again, you could test it by going try B, 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 A. So if you went B, 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 A, you still have 4 a, B's and 1 A. So um, that's uh, that's what these mean, these, these, uh, these numbers. Okay, so here, if we have another B, so we're, this is adding another B, and it's still only going to be one A. And here we add an A to that one. And then here we add another A, another A, and another B, and another B. So this would be two A's, uh, two B's, one A, and two and two. So two B's, two A's, uh, mod three. So it would be two B's, two A's, five B's, two A's, uh, et cetera, right? So that's what that means. And then you just have to complete it by adding more A's this way, more B's this way. This is A's and this is B's. So then you just say, where do I have the number of A's mod three is less than the number of B's mod three. So I decide which states have the number of A's mod three less than the number of B's mod three, which it's very easy to see because the first number is the number of A's mod three. The second one is the number of B's mod three. So this one has the number of A's mod three is less than the number of B's mod three. This one has the number of A's mod three is less than the number of B's mod three. 
And this one has the number of A's mod three is less than the number of B's mod three. So you just come up with some strings and you test it. And in, in, as long as it satisfies this, but it's A's and B's in any order, then it will be uh, end up in an accepting state. All right, next, this is the, num the size of your string. The size of your string mod five equals zero. So the, accept the initial state would be accepting and then you would just have A's and B's, one, two, three, four, five A's and B's, oops. So you would think that this would be accepting and then you could just draw a cycle, but it doesn't work that way because this one is not accepting because it says the size of your string cannot be five. So we have to go all the way up to 10, six. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, so this is accepting. So this would be zero uh, symbols in our string is accepting, 10. And then you can go, you could go on and add five more, or you could loop back to uh, uh, 10, 11, 12, 34, to here. This would also be fine. And you could count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten characters symbols in my string is fine. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is fine. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. And this is a little longer version. Either solution is fine. All right. So now we have the number of A's. The number of B's mod three is less than two. Now keep in mind that we have alphabet A, B. So you also need to consider A's, but we don't care about how many A's. So we can have any, and it doesn't order, doesn't matter. So you can start here by saying, this is the number of B's mod three is zero. Pick up a B. The number of B's mod three is one. Pick up another B. The number of B's mod three is two. Pick up another B. So this is zero B's, one B, two B's, three B's, four B's, five B's, six B's, seven B's, et cetera. The number of B's mod three is less than two. So that would be one or zero. It's not complete because it's not a DFA and because we have an alphabet A, B. So we have to say we can have any number of A's in any of our states. All right, so now we have NFAs. So when you have union, there's a couple of ways you can do union. So, but this says no more than five states. So you could go like this and say, okay, I'm gonna start out and I'm going to do uh, lambda transitions like this. So my first lambda transition is going to be my first language, which is A, B, A, and then any number of Bs, and that's accepting. And then my other language is going to be A, B, and any number of As. So I didn't label them just so you don't have to watch me, but this is how you would do union. So this is perfectly acceptable. This is an NFA. You don't have to define all the transitions for all the states. However, this has, uh, we can just label it with one. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight states. So this has eight states. So this is not an acceptable solution for this question. It says to have no more than five states. So I can notice that this ABA and this ABA are begin both of them. 
So I can definitely start out with A and then B and then A. So uh, this isn't the only way to do it, but you can, um, this is uh, one solution. So I do the A, B, A one where this is any number of Bs. And then I could get my A, my A and B for this one. After I get my A and B for this one, I could take a lambda transition over here and I could pick up my A's over here. So this is five states and this is perfectly acceptable. Um, so this is a, a sample solution for this practice question. This says to do four states. So let's uh, see, this says exactly four states. So let's see what we have here. We have to have at least one B for this language, at least one B followed by an A. So this is not does not have the empty string in it, but this is any number of A's. So this does have the empty string. So I'm gonna start out with the B language first. So I'm going to have a B and then I can have any number of Bs after that, that's n is greater than one, followed by a single A, and that's going to go into an accepting state. And then for this one, it says I need four states, so I could take a lambda transition over here, and this lambda transition over here is going to make uh, the initial state uh, possibly accepting, it's going to, to uh, you could come in here to your initial state and take this, I mean, it makes the empty string accepting because you could come in here to your initial state and jump over to the accepting state or you can pick up any number of A's. Now there's not, there's always, you know, there might be a little bit different solution. Um, if you do come up with something, what I recommend doing is taking strings that are in the language and testing them. The way that I grade these when I do an exam is I, come up with strings that are in the language and I test to make sure I end up in an accepting state. And then I come up with strings that I know are not in the language and I test to make sure I do not end up in an accepting state. An NFA does not have to be complete. I do not need to say what I'm gonna do from here. I didn't even say anything on this part about down here about what I'm gonna do with a B. All right, so the next one, this is also a union. It doesn't say anything about how many states it has to be. So I'm just gonna start out here and I'm just going to do a Lambda transition here for this first language that can have any number of Bs. And I'm going to do a Lambda transition here for this other language that is B, A, B, any number of A's. This is a uh, my solution and right here you can see that this solution has an extra lambda transition here. I, uh, you don't, it's not needed, but it could be there. So there's not always going to, if it doesn't say how many states, it's not always going to have, um, it's not always going to have exactly your solution. Again, like I said, the only way to test it is to try strings that are in the language and make sure that you end up in an accepting state and try to come up some, with some strings that are not in the language and make sure you don't end up in an accepting state. All right, so here's our next, uh, our next one. We want to draw this is the transition function. So let's draw this NFA. We start out with Q0. With an A, you can stay in Q0. So Q0 with an A, you stay in Q0. Or Q0 with an A, you go to Q1. That's that transition right there. Q1 with a B, you can stay in Q1. Or with a B, you could go to Q2. Q2 with an A, you could stay in Q2. And that's it. So that is our, our uh, NFA for this. So the next thing we're going to do is, 
Oh, that's the next problem. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the procedure to convert an NFA to a DFA. So remember that the definition of a DFA is that there exists a language. Uh, the definition of a regular language is that there exists a DFA for it. And we know that if there is a DFA, there, uh, if there is an NFA, then there also exists a DFA. So I'm going to go here, Q0 with an A. I can go to Q0, Q1. You could put these like a set, but it's OK to just put Q0, Q1. OK, so Q0 with a B. I don't have anything defined for that. Q1 with an A. I don't have anything defined for that. But with a B, I go to Q1, Q2. And Q2 with an A, I go to Q2. And with a B, nothing is defined. So essentially, we don't need to worry about this table because we don't have any lambdas. So now all we need to do is we need to get started and uh, create our, our DFA and uh, label everything. So the procedure to create our DFA is to find our initial state. Well, in this case, our initial state is very easy because we don't have any lambda transition. So our initial state is going to be Q0. But I'm going to take Q0 and I'm going to rename it P0 just because I don't I want I, I don't want to be confused. So P0 is going to be my initial state. P0 with an A is going to take me to a new state, which I'm going to name P1. And P1 is going to be the state of Q0, Q1. So from P0 with an A, I'm going to go to P1. P0 with a B, I'm not going to get anywhere. So now I have done this state. Now my next state is P1. So I look at this table for Q0 and Q1. Where can I get with an A? Well, with an A, I can. So that's P1 is my new state. Where can I get with an A? With an A, I can get to P1. From Q0, Q1 with a B, where can I get? I can get to Q1, Q2. So Q1, Q2 is going to be a new state called P2. So now I take a look at P2, which is Q1, Q2. Q1, Q2 with an A, I'm going to get to a new state. Oh, I'm on P2. I'm going to get to a new state called P3. P3 is the old Q2. So from Q1, Q2 with an A, I'm going to get to P3. Q1, Q2 with a B, I'm going to get to uh, Q1, Q2. So that's P2. And now from my new state of Q2, which is uh, I'm going to, from Q2 with a um, A, I'm going to get to P3. What's my new state is called P3. And with a B, I'm going to get to the trap. So my new state P4 is going to be my trap state. So P4, obviously, I'm going to stay in P4. Uh, that's my trap state. So then I just, once I get this table, I can draw it. P0 with an A. I go to P1. With a B, I go to P4. P1 with an A, I stay here. With a B, I go to P2. P2 with an A, I go to P3. And P2 with a B, I stay here. P3 with an A, I stay here. And with a B, I go to the trap. And then the trap, of course, you have to define for the A and the B. And then you just take a look here, Q2. So any of my states that has a Q2 in it is going to be accepting. So P2 will be accepting and P3 will be accepting. And this does have a solution in the back of the book.
All right, so the next one is very similar. So I didn't draw it out because it's already been drawn out. The only difference is we have this from Q1, we have a lambda transition now. So the first step is to write everything out, including the lambda transitions. So from Q0 with an A, I can get to Q0, Q1. Q0 with a B, I can't get anywhere. Q0 with a lambda, I don't have anything. Q1, oh, I have two lambda transitions. Is there two lambda transitions in this? Q1, with, yes, there's this one too. Okay, so Q1 with an A, I don't have anything defined for Q1 with an A. Q1 with a B, I can get to Q2. And Q1 with a lambda, I can get to Q1, Q2. And then I have um, Q2, Q2 with an A, I go to Q2. Q2 with a B, I use nothing to find. So now we need to do step two, which is get rid of the lambda transitions. To get rid of the lambda transitions, you need to consider, well, you can do it either by looking at it or by using the table. So you start out with Q1. And the, the, the key is, is that you have to, consume, you have to consume the symbol, right? So if I am in Q, if I am in Q0 and I consume an A, I will get back to Q0. If I'm in Q0, I don't know why that doesn't erase, but whatever. If I'm in Q0 and I consume an A, oh, that's weird. If I'm in Q0 and I consume an A, I will get to Q1. But then I can look over here at Q1 and I can see that Q1 has a lambda transition to Q2. So if I'm in Q0, I consume the A and I get to Q1, I can take that lambda transition and I've only consumed one A and I will end up in Q2. And the way you see that on the table is you can say I'm in Q0, I consume an A, I go to Q1, and I can see that Q1 can make a lambda transition to Q2. So from Q0 with an A, I can get to Q0, Q1, Q2. All right, let's see about a B. If I'm in Q0 and I want to consume a B, I cannot get anywhere. It doesn't matter anything about lambda transitions. There's no way to get from Q0 with a B. Now I'm in Q1. In Q1, I can consume a B and go back, uh, oh, A, we're doing A's first. Okay, I'm in Q1, I cannot consume an A. However, you will see that I can take this lambda transition over to Q2, consume the A, and end up in Q2. So from Q1 with an A, I can get to Q2. Q1 with a B, I can stay in Q1, or I can go to Q2. I'm never gonna get back to Q0. And Q2 with an A, I can stay in Q2. And with a B, I can't get anywhere. So once you get this table right, it's very easy to get from this table over to this table. The only key here is coming up with your initial state. So my initial state has no lambda transitions. So my initial state will be P0, which was Q0. So P0 is my initial state. P0 with an A, I'm going to get to a new state, which is Q1, Q2, Q0, and that's going to be P1. And with a B, I'm going to go to the trap state. Now my new state is Q0, Q1, Q2. So from Q0, Q1, Q2, where can I get with an A? If I combine all of this Q0, Q1, Q2 with an A, I can get to Q0, Q1, and Q2, because you combine all that together. So I will get to P1. Oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong table. Oops. <laughs> Don't look at that table right there. This table, Q0, Q1, Q2. With an A, I can get to Q0, Q1, Q2. Q0, Q1, Q2 with a B, I can get to Q1, Q2, because you combine all of them together. So I have my new state, P2, which is called Q1, Q2. So now I have to do P2. P2, which is Q1, 
Q1, Q2. Q1, Q1, Q2, not Q0, Q1. Q1, Q2, with an A, I can get to Q2. So I have to make a new state called Q2, which is P3. From Q1, Q2, I can get to P3. And from Q1, Q2 with a B, I'm going to stay in Q1, Q2. All right, then I have Q2, Q2, which is P3. With an A, I'm going to stay in Q2. And with a B, I'm gonna to go to the trap. And then of course the trap, we can call that P4. And then we just draw it and it would look like this. All right, let's go to the one that's graded. So the one that is graded, first we need to draw our, N our D NFA. So we start out here and we have Q0. Q0 with a one, we go to Q1. Q0 with a lambda, we go to Q2. Q1 with a one, we go to Q2. So I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Q Two with a one, we go back to Q1. Q2 with a zero, we go to Q3. And Q2 with a zero, we go to Q4. And Q4 with a zero, we go back to Q2. So hopefully I have drawn this right. And then we have Q3 is our accepting state. So the first step is to draw the NFA. So let's make sure that Q1 is here. Yes, so this looks like it's drawn correctly. It's just a little different than the figure over there. And that's uh, our NFA. Now we want to convert it to a DFA. So the next step is to convert this to a DFA. Oh, I left this here, that's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's convert it to a DFA. So from, okay, so we'll convert it to a DFA now. If I'm in Q0 and I have a zero, I don't have anything defined for that. If I'm in Q0 and I get a one, then I go to Q1. And I can take a lambda, is I, do I only have one lambda jump on this? Yes. And I can take a lambda jump from Q0 to Q2. If I'm in Q1, I don't have anything defined for a zero. And with a one, I can get to Q2. And there's no, no other lambdas. Q2 with a zero, I can get to Q3, Q4. And with a one, I can get to Q1. Q3, I don't have anything defined once I get to Q3, is that right? And then Q4 with a zero, I can get back to Q2. I have nothing defined for A1. So now the first step is to get rid of lambda. So the Q0, how do we get rid of the lambda? Well, this is what we do is we say, I'm in Q0 and I can take this jump over to Q1, Q2. And where can Q2 take me if I consume a zero? So if I'm in Q0, if I'm in Q0 and I take this jump, I can jump to Q2 and I could get to Q3, or I could jump to Q2 and I could get to Q4. So from Q0, I with a zero, I can get to Q3, Q4. Let me repeat that. There's a couple ways you can do it from the table or you can do it from looking at it. If I'm in Q0 and I took the jump over to Q2, at that point I have not consumed a zero. You must consume a zero in order to make that transition. So now that I've taken this jump, if I consume the zero I could end up in Q3 or I could consume the zero and end up in Q4. So that is uh, why that's a Q3, Q4. Okay, so then the next one is if I'm in Q0 
I can take this jump here and consume a one and end up in Q1. But that doesn't really matter because I could also take the one and end up in Q1. All right, so now I'm in Q1. I can't get anywhere with a zero and I am in Q1 and I can get back to Q2 with a one. And nothing goes back to Q0, so I don't have to really worry about the lambda anymore. So if I'm in Q2 with a 0, I can get to Q3, Q4. And with a 1, I can get to Q1. If I'm in Q3, I don't go anywhere. And if I'm in Q4 with a 0, I can get to Q2. And with a 1, I don't go anywhere. So now we have... Um, that table. Once we have that table, then we start on this table. Now the tricky part of this is we need to come up with our P0, which is our initial state. And in this case, our P0 is not simply Q0 because we can come to Q0, take this lambda jump. So our P0 is actually Q0, Q2. Again, let me repeat that. If I just go into Q0, I can take this lambda jump so my initial state is not simply Q0. My initial state is Q0, Q2. So my P0 is Q0, Q2. So I go over to this table and I look at Q0, Q2 combination. And I say, OK, where can I get with a 0? With a 0, I can get to Q3, Q4. So that's going to be my P1. And where can I get with a 1? I can get to Q1. So that's going to be my P2. So now I need, I've done my P1. I need to, I mean, P0, now I need to do P1. P1 is the combination of three and four. So three and four, three and four with a zero, I can get to Q2. So I need to make another state call for Q2, which is P3. And uh, from three and four with a one, I can't get anywhere. That's going to be my trap. So now I've done that one. Now I do P2. P2 is Q1. Q1 with a zero, I don't go anywhere. P1 with a one, I go to P3. And now I do P3, which is Q2. P3, which is Q2, so P3 with a zero, I get back to P1. And with a one, I get back to P2. So I haven't made any new states, so then I just have my trap state, which is P4. And technically this is P4. But I didn't put the number in yet because I didn't know how many states I was going to be creating. So there is my, uh, the same work, 0, 2, 3, 4, 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 1, trap, trap, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Yes. And then from this, you just draw it, right? So you start out, I got P0. With a zero, I go to P1. With a one, I go to P2. P1. With a zero, I go to P3. And with a one, with a one, I go to the trap state, which is P4. Okay, so P2 with a one. I go to the trap, with a zero, I go to the trap state. And with a one, I go over here to P3. P3 with a zero, I go back to P1. And P3 with a one, I go over here to P2. And then of course my trap needs to have, be labeled. So now I have a DFA. And how do I decide which state is going to be accepting? any state that has Q3 in it. So this has Q3 in it. This has Q3 in it. So I believe that that is my only accepting state, which would be P1. And you can double check your work by saying, okay, what's a string in here? 
one, one, zero. So one, one, zero leads to an accepting state. So let's try one, one. Oh, what did I mess up here? P3 with a zero. Oh, that should be a zero. P1 with a, P1 with a zero. Okay, try it again. One, one, zero is accepting. Let's try one, another string that's accepting. Let's see, one, one, zero, zero, zero. So one, one, zero, zero, zero is accepting. So we go one, one, zero, zero, zero. That also lands me in an accepting state. All right, so hopefully that is correct. Uh, anyway, if you notice something, let me know. And uh, I have it uh, drawn out on your, um, there's a paper, uh, I mean, a document with the answers. This is just the video part. Okay, so now this is how to reduce the number of states in a DFA. So we're, what I, this was the practice question. So what I did on this one is I renamed it because these names were too long, zero, one, two, da, da, da. So I drew the exact same DFA. This is a DFA. You can tell because all transitions are defined for all states, including the trap state. And I redrew it and renamed it with new names. Again, the names are not, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going with, the, with what the book does. And then you draw a half a table because we only we don't need to compare p0 against itself and if we compare p0 against p1 we don't also need to compare p1 against p0 we just need to compare what we're trying to do here is we're trying to decide could we combine p0 and p1 into one state or or not so could we combine p3 and p4 into one state or not so that's what we're doing this uh, table and that's what we're going through. And we're marking states that cannot be combined. So we start out here by, this is the same one, it's just more space. So we start here by marking one that is uh, accepting versus not accepting. So P1 and P0 cannot be combined because P1 is accepting and P0 is not accepting. So you can't take a, make a new DFA by combining two states, one that is accepting and one is not. So we're going to put an X there. And we're gonna go ahead and put an X in between any in which one is accepting and one is not. So P0 cannot be combined with P1. It can also not be combined with P2. It also cannot be combined with P3. And it also cannot be combined with P4, right? P1 cannot be combined with P5 or P6 because they are not accepting and P1 is. P2 cannot be combined with five or six. P3 cannot be combined with five or six. P4 cannot be combined with five or six. So P4 and P1. So once you do that, that is step one. Uh, you mark them to say whether or not they could be combined or not. So we cannot combine them. P1 and P2, possibly. P1 and P3, P1 and P4, P0 and P5, P0, P6, P2, P3, et cetera. And then you just go through in a procedural way and compare those that are left. So we would compare P0 with P5. So first we notice P0 is not accepting, P5 is not accepting. So we see, oh, could we combine those two and make them, and I'm just going procedurally through the table, could we combine them into one state? All right, so we say, where does P0 go with a zero? P0 with a zero goes to P1. P5 with a zero goes to P6. Well, if we looked at our table, we can see that P1 and P6 cannot be combined. So if P1 and if these two states cannot be combined and I wanted to combine these states and go with a zero to another set of combined states, I can't do that. So because these two, P1 and P6 cannot be combined, therefore P0 and P5 cannot be combined. So I don't even need to test a one because I can't even do it with a zero. Now we try P0, P6 with a zero. 
P0 goes to P1, P6 goes to P6. So obviously it's the same problem. P1 and P6 cannot be combined, so P0, P6 cannot be combined. Then I go to my next set, which is P1, P2. P1, P2. P1 with a zero goes to P2. P2 with a zero goes to P2. All right, so far, I can combine them. Let's see about P1, P2 with a one. P1 with a one goes to P3. P2 with a one goes to P3. So look at that. I can, I can, know that I can combine P1 and P2 into one state because they P2, P2, and P3, P3 are already the same state. So I know I can combine P1 and P2 into one state. So now let's check and keep going. What about P1 and P3? Can I combine them as well? P1, P3 with a zero. P1 with a zero goes to P2. P3 with a zero goes to P5. These cannot be combined, so therefore P1 and P3 cannot be combined. What about P1 and P4? P1 and P4 with a zero. P1 with a zero goes to P2. P4 with a zero goes to P5. So nope, I cannot combine P1 and P4. Now I move on to my next set, P2 and P3. Some of them you can see right away, but I'm just going through the procedure. P2 with a zero goes to P2. P3 with a zero goes to P5, so I cannot combine P2 and P3. What about P2 and P4? P2 and P4 with a zero. P2 P2 goes to P2. P4 with a zero goes to P5. So I cannot combine P2 and P4. What about P3 and P4? P3 and P4. P3 with a zero goes to P5. P4 with a zero goes to P5. P3 and P4 with a one. They both also go to P5. So now I can combine P3 and P4. And now I need to check P5 and P6. So these two can also be combined. And then you just draw a new DFA with the combined states. So P5 and P6 with a zero goes to P6, P6. P5 and P6 with a one goes to P5 and P6. So I also can combine P5 and P6. So I'm going to draw a new DFA that has one, two, three, four states. P0 is going to be the same. P1, P2 will be combined and accepting. P3, P4 will be combined and accepting. And P5, P6 will be combined and not accepting. Okay, so now we have our last one. So let's draw our DFA. We start out, we have Q0 with a zero. I'm drawing it like the one down there. You go to Q3, Q0 with a one. You go to Q1, Q1 with a zero. You go to Q4, Q1 with a one. You go to Q2, Q2 with a zero. You go to Q4, Q2 with a one. You go back to Q1, Q3 with a zero. You go to Q4, Q3 with a one, you go to Q2, Q4 with the zero, you stay here. Accepting our Q2 and Q4. So first step is to draw the DFA. The next step is to create the table and see if we can combine any. So that's our drawn DFA. And now we have our table. So first we go through and compare those accepting between those that are not. So Q0 cannot be combined with two or four. Q1 cannot be combined with two or four. Two, the two cannot be uh, four. Uh, Q1 and Q0 could be combined. Q1 and Q3, Q1 and Q3, Q2 and Q4, Q2 and Q3, 
and Q3 and Q4. And now we just go through the same procedure. We say, all right, let's try Q0, Q1 with a zero. Q0 with a zero goes to Q3. Q1 with a zero goes to Q4. They can, are not combined, so they cannot be combined. Try Q0, Q3 with a zero. Q0 with a zero goes to Q3. Q3 with a zero goes to Q4. So Q0 and Q3 cannot be combined. Let's try Q1 and Q3. Q1, Q3. Q1 with a zero goes to Q4. Q3 with a zero goes to Q4. Q1 and Q3 with a one. Q1 with a one goes to Q2. Q3 with a one goes to Q2. So Q1 and Q3 can be combined into one single state. So they're not next to each other, but you can redraw it with those two combined into one state. Now we try Q2 and Q4. Oh, Q3 and Q4 can't be combined. So the only other one we can, because Q3 is not accepted and Q4 is. So now let's see about Q2 and Q4. Q2, Q4 with a zero. Q2 with a zero goes to Q4. Q4 with a zero goes to Q4. Q2, Q4 with a one. Q2 with a one goes to Q1. And Q2, Q4 with a one goes to Q4. So Q1 and Q4 cannot be combined. So therefore they cannot be combined. So our new DFA should be Q0 with a zero or a one will go to the combined state of Q1, Q3. Q1, Q3 with a zero is gonna go to Q4. Q1, Q3 with a one is gonna go to Q2. Q2 with a zero is gonna go to Q4. Q2 with a one is gonna go back to our Q1, Q3. And then Q4, hopefully this is correct. Q4, if you guys see something that's not correct, let me know, but I think that I copied it over, right? I just wanted to make sure the Q2 with a one. Q2 with a one goes back to Q1, yeah. So that should be your new DFA that has a combined state of Q1, Q3.